everyone who thirsts, come to the waters. Come and eat. Listen diligently to me. So you guys want to talk about the Passover week? We can do it really, really quickly. But um, you know the three day and three night thing? Y'all were probably raised with, I was. I was a Lutheran. Whoops, it goes up here. There it is, somewhere, there it is. Click, okay. <clears throat> and I always ask that question about the three days and the three nights. I ask that question a lot, actually. <laughs> And I got a very similar answer over the years, and that was, well, the Jews count inclusively. So that's how you get three days and three nights, you know. So anyway, we're going to go over that, because <clears throat> I don't care how you count inclusively. You can't get there. And then we're going to talk really fast here about um, the Passover week. I'm just going to give a quick overview, because Yeshua was the perfect Passover lamb. Amen? Okay. So we're going to show you... The timeline laid out in scripture for this time and then we're going to show an overlay of Yeshua and uh, what happened the year he was um, on the cross. Okay, so here's our timeline. We're probably going to want to swing up there. Okay, so the first month of the year is the month of Aviv. Everybody gets that, I know, here. So um, this is what the month of Abib looked like in the year um, Yeshua's death and resurrection. Um, all days begin in the evening before, and they go to sunset on um, the day shown. Just kind of though. Because this is a today's Gregorian secular calendar, but we have to, that's how our brains think. You know, when I, when I do graphic calendars and I do it, in Yah's timing calendar, people get so confused because it's just not how we think, you know? And if I want people to show up on the right day, I use these calendars and then I, you know, explain. So, um, here we go. So, at the beginning of the year, the barley is Aviv and you have the new moon, the Rosh Kodesh. And when you have both of those, it begins the new year, which is the first month, beginning of, of Beginning of months for us. Okay. <clears throat> so we, that first day is the head of the year, Rosh Hashanah. On the tenth day, the Pesach lamb is set aside and observed. All this is laid out in scripture, mostly in Exodus. <clears throat> On the fourteenth day is Passover. Evening to evening. On the 15th day is the first day of unleavened bread. It's a high day Sabbath. And it is a Sabbath, and that's part of where things get kind of confusing in the Christian world because they know the Sabbath on the seventh day, but they don't understand the annual Sabbath. When you understand the annual Sabbath and you lay it out and you put Yeshua overlay on it, it's perfect. Of course it's perfect, right? It's Yeshua. <clears throat> that would be the seventh day weekly Shabbat. And then we have the waving of the first fruits and the count of the Omer, the Bikurim. And then we begin the count of the Omer, and that goes to Pentecost, also known as Shavuot. Um, Shavuot is the Feast of Weeks. We count seven weeks of seven, and on the 50th day is Shavuot, or Pentecost. Um, and this begins the count. It's always the morrow following the, sh the Shabbat within the Passover celebration, the seven days. Passover is seven days. And the last day of unleavened bread, the Sabbath, is right there on the 21st, day of the, of the month of the Abib. So this is how it's laid out in the Torah. I know it's kind of a quick thing, but... Um, and this is online. We have this on our website, but you don't have it... You just have it all together. You don't have it all laid out one at a time like this. So, Okay. Um, Yeshua is going to be in the red... The tenth day of the month, the Passover lamb was set aside and it was observed. It was observed until Passover to make sure it was the perfect, spotless, blemish-free lamb for Passover. Okay? On 
the ninth of the month, if you count back the days, you know, he went to um, Bethany. Um, if you count back, it, it lands on the ninth of the month. And it confused me at first, but it, that night was the dinner. And he had the dinner, remember when Mary anointed her, with her hair and washed his feet, anointed him with the spikenard, with the oil. And if you look at the Greek word for that dinner, it means like a special dinner. So that was in a Rev Shabbat dinner with his friends when that happened. That was the beginning of the tenth day, because the day begins at night and goes through till the next sunset. So that was the tenth day when the lamb was set aside. It was chosen and set aside. So Yeshua was perfectly fulfilled that, chosen and set aside, and then he was observed. He had the triumphal entry into Jerusalem with all the palm trees and the Hoshianas. And then he was in the temple during the day in the Mount of Olives at night, turning over tables and causing all kinds of interesting moments. And then the Last Supper, as it's called, um, was his Passover Seder, was at the beginning of the 14th. Because, so I can get this to work. Right here is the beginning of the 14th, and all of this is the 14th, which is Passover. He had to be hanging on the cross, or some people prefer the stake, when the Passover lamb was sacrificed for all Israel, which was here. So he celebrated and showed us how we're to celebrate using communion and washing each other's feet and commemorate it in remembrance of him at the beginning of the 14th. That's why some Messianic groups meet on that day for um, their Seder. After that, he was at Gethsemane, praying. Then they had the trials over the nighttime hour. I mean, they don't do that today. They don't have trials at midnight, in the middle of the night, but they grabbed him afterwards and, you know, it was a pretty big deal. But it all happened because Yeshua had to be on the cross on Passover because he's the perfect Passover lamb. And he died at three. They put him into the grave and then on, the next day was a Sabbath, right? Here. So he dies and goes into the grave, and this is the Sabbath. That's the Sabbath they had to get him in the grave for, not the weekly Sabbath. And they didn't buy and sell. That was the Sabbath. So the women bought and prepared burial spices, and that was a major undertaking to do that. So they did that on the day that was a Rev Shabbat. It was a Friday, but it was not a Sabbath. It was a day you could do that. So they went and did that there. And then it was Sabbath again. It was the weekly Sabbath, a Rev Shabbat. And during the spring, it's, it's darker sooner. So they had to go, and then they went up to the grave after, and that's when they found him, because they went up there with their, with their spices and everything. Um, and they said they stood at a distance to see where he, they buried him, um, you know, on the, this day here so that they could see where they would come back so that they could buy their spices and take care of it. Um, I just can't imagine what that was like. Move that off, there we go. Okay, and then at the end of the Shabbat, after the day was fully over, the resurrection. Hallelujah. Our great hope, amen? Okay. And then what's really cool is this waving of the first fruits right here. That's the bikurim. And that is the first of the first fruits of the barley are harvested, and the high priest waves it before Yehovah before the entire rest of the barley can be harvested. It cannot be harvested until that is done. And that is done here, and then you start counting the Omer, which is the counting of during the harvest the amount of the harvest, the amount of the Omer. The Omer is the amount of a man. Um, it was the amount of manna in the wilderness. And so on that day, remember when Mary went to him um, in, the, in the garden where the tomb was? 
And he said, don't touch me. I've yet to ascend to the Father. Because he needed to fulfill this on that day. So he's the perfect, perfect fulfillment. Any questions? Okay. okay, so we're going through this quick. So now we're going to get to the three days and three nights. Because this was always my question. I had this question since I was a little kid. And I asked the question over and over and over. And um, I finally got an answer uh, from somebody who was in the Church of God's Seventh Day in Portland. And they handed me a little track, and there was the answer. And I went, ha, huh. <laughs> okay, I get it now. I get it, I get it. So this is sharing, and this was like in 1991 when I learned this. So then some of the scribes and Pharisees answered saying, Teacher, we want to see a sign from you. But he answered and said to them, An evil and adulterous generation seeks after a sign. And no sign will be given except the sign of the prophet Jonah. For as Jonah was three days and three nights in the belly of the great fish, so the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth. Okay? In the heart of the earth is a key here. Now, the church teaches inclusive counting, right? And... Inclusive counting will give you three days. You've got Good Friday, and there's a day. And then Sabbath, and there's a day. And you have Resurrection Sunday, and there's a day. Okay, so you got your three days, right? You can, you can get that with inclusive counting. <clears throat> but what about the three nights? And that's always the question I've had. I do not see, can anybody show me the third night? There's only two nights. I cannot figure out how to wiggle it, twist it, turn it, or anything and get three nights. And scripture is abundantly clear. It's three nights, right? Otherwise, Yeshua is a liar. Exactly. This is the only sign we're given. It's not like we're given 10,000 signs. He said, we're only going to give you one sign, and this is it. Okay? And the church messes it up. <laughs> anyway, sorry. I'm getting on my soapbox here, but this has been something, a question I've had since I was a little kid. Because I knew how to count to three. I did get that one. So let's go look back on our timeline here. Remember our timeline we just went through? So the Son of Man will be three days and three nights in the heart of the earth, right? So right here, he went into the grave. Right here, he came out of the grave. We've got three days. Woohoo! We've got three nights. As soon as they come up, there they are. Three days and three nights. The only sign we will be given that he will be in the heart of the earth. Amen? We got it. And he fits the perfect Passover lamp. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call upon his name. He is near, he is near, he is near. Yeshu Hashem Behir Yeshua Hashem Behim